Mr. Banana Man. From Humble Beginnings. An interesting character. But before we get into that, oh, and by the way, I'm Gibraltar Productions here. Welcome back. Um, what video would you guys want to see next week? The tale of the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen, who took Fort Ticonderoga during the American Revolution? Or John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry? In, during Bleeding Kansas, where he and multiple slaves tried to start a rebellion in Virginia. So, oh, and vote in the comments. I always forget that. So, the story of Sam the Banana Man Zamuri. He was born in Chisinau, Moldova, which is... Well, then, well, now it's just now Moldova, but then it was part of the Russian Empire. He was a poor Jew, and he immigrated to the United States, or emigrated to the United States when he was 14 years old. When he arrived, he lived in New Orleans, and he noticed the banana. He discovered about the banana, and he thought, hey, maybe I could start importing these, which had been done. And this was now more profitable than ever because refrigeration. So he goes up the Coyamel River in Honduras and he decides to start buying up small plantations and he gains some of this money from buying ripe bananas in New Orleans and selling them to passerbys because by the time that they got to where their eventual destination was past New Orleans, they would be overripened and rotten. So, he does this, and he starts buying up small plantations in Honduras and um, multiple countries, Guatemala, and he's not the only one of these people. There's the United Fruit Company, the Vaccaro Brothers, and a lot of other smaller plantations, but nobody really talks about them. So, this happens, and... Zamuri gets richer and richer. Now, in 1910, the Honduran government isn't as compliant as they should be because there's this symbiosis, which is known as the Banana Republics, in which the United Fruit Company and all these other companies that Zamuri worked for, they give, they develop infrastructure in return Honduras and all those other countries, they give them massive tax, low taxes, land grants, everything. So, Honduras wasn't being that compliant, so Zamuri hires a mercenary army led by Lee Christmas, might do an episode on him later, and overthrows the government of Honduras. Now, he did this again in the 1950s, but... Actually, that's a pretty interesting story about Jacobor Arbenz and um, Juan Jose Arevalo. They're pretty interesting, but I'm all over the place on this one. But um, it's actually, it's really interesting. So he expands and he expands and expands until his only really competition are no one. And that's how it is for a while. And then this thing called Panama disease comes up, and it devastates, and it targets bananas of the specific species called Gros Michel. They're called different things in different places, but that's what it is in English. Or Latin, it's, yeah. So, then the United Fruit Company and all these other companies, which is the very work, well, oh yeah, and at some point, United and Coyamel, the two different companies... They merged. Coyamel was owned by Zamuri, but then somehow Zamuri became the CEO of it all. So, this happens, and then Zamuri, he... He starts diversifying which crops he grows. He starts growing coffee, and yeah, and eventually... It all kind of dies down, and the company doesn't do as well, and they still do exist to today, and they are still operating under different names, of course, and with a little more human rights involved, but, um, 
yeah, so, vote next episode you want next week. Um, as I said, the Green Mountain Boys versus John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry.